Firstly, what is Thai food? Why is Thai food so bloody delicious? Well, uh, a few things in my opinion contribute to that, all right? So imagine if you will, uh, Southeast Asia, it's kind of the, the, the eastern, southern kind of tip of Southeast Asia that pokes into the ocean. Uh, you have to think about a country geographically uh, to understand why the food has evolved the way it has, all right? We're surrounded by oceans on the bottom, so we know there's seafood. Uh, we know there's everything that has to do with the tropics and the beach. Uh, in the middle and the north, we've got kind of uh, various terrains. We have what's called the Mekong River that runs up the middle. So that also tells me other than the seafood in the south, we've got fresh water fish. We've got kind of more plain lands where we farm rice. And then as we go to the north, we've got kind of that golden triangle, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai area which is mountainous, full of teak wood forests. So now that you start to think about uh, m m deeper proteins, buffalo, pigs, all the things that roam in the forest, we eat those things. So Thailand has an amazing diverse geography that lends itself to all the ingredients. Let's talk about history a little bit. Well, we know Thai food to have five flavors, right? Uh, and all cuisine, in my opinion, has five flavors, but the Thai people really kind of emphasize the balance of hot, sour, salty, sweet, and savory. So Thailand never has been controlled or colonized by a foreign power, right? Vietnam has French influence, um, right? Cambodia um, has, I think, Russian influence. Um, you're gonna have to correct me. Uh, Laos, all of our neighbors have been occupied and that, occup uh, that occupation also kind of brings in those foods and flavors of the occupiers. Since Thailand has not been occupied, you have this organic kind of historical uh, natural evolution of the food. So the governments haven't changed. Uh, and cooking in Thailand is, 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 is revered. Uh, kings have written cookbooks. It's pretty amazing. So what are the primary influences? I'm not going to bog us down. Uh, we know that uh, whenever you're eating rice, you're, it's a Chinese influence. There's a lot of Chinese influence. We're eating curries. That's an Indian influence. All the spices through the spice routes that bring curry as well is kind of uh, also um, those, those Indian spice roads all the way from Iran. If you think about what satay is, which we're making today, uh, you have all the spices and the kebabs. There's a direct relationship between kebab and satay. And then I would say the last thing is the indigenous kind of herbs, right? That grow natural. Okay. So, so, so that's it. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do the one hour lecture version. I'm gonna do the quick summary of geography, historical influence. Let's actually get into the ingredients now, all right? So let me take you through the fundamental ingredients of Thai cooking right now. I'm not gonna cover everything because Thai cuisine is massive. Let's cover fundamentals, all right? Let's start with herbs because herbs are such an important part. Ali, let's have you frame up to this first sheet pan right here. Here's the trinity of the Thai kitchen in terms of herbs, all right? The first one is this one right here. This is lemongrass. The second one is here. This is galanga, galanga, not ginger. This is ginger. They do not look alike other than their shape, all right? So uh, it's a rhizome. It's got a very um, funky, um, almost medicinal, delicious kind of piney flavor. It's not like ginger. And then finally, here it is, Kaffir lime leaf. That was it right there. It looks like two leaves stuck together. Intense citrus aroma on the kaffir lime leaf. Uh, lemongrass, intense citrus aroma. And then the galanga gives you more of like I said, almost like a pine-like um, spiciness because it is actually a little spicy. So what do these go into? This is my trinity by the way. So back to mirepoix. Mirepoix is basically the French trinity that goes into just about anything of celery, carrots, and onions, all right? The nice thing about these herbs is they're also, uh, believe it or not, freezable. So, so there it is. Um, I'm gonna make soup stock. And, and all I've done here, Ali, if you wanna pan into that pot really, really quickly. So 
Guys, I've got just chicken bones, a carcass of a chicken boiling, and this is how I want to add uh, aromatics to make chicken stock. So this is the Thai chicken stock, by the way, and the Thai chicken stock is gonna go into making two of our soups today. Galanga, just thin slice, uh, high surface area. That's all I'm asking for. All right, don't get fancy. I don't even peel it because you're gonna extract it anyway in most cases. Uh, since you're down there, Ali, let's talk about how to cut lemongrass. Okay, so lemongrass grows out of the ground like so. Here's the root, and here's the ground, and it comes up and makes giant reeds. It's an invasive species. If you ever want to play a trick on a neighbor, I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> if you ever want to propagate lemongrass because it doesn't go away like bamboo, just plant a bunch of these and they'll never leave. Okay, let's say I've grown this lemongrass. And this, it's in the soil. And this is where about pokes up from, uh, from the ground right here. Uh, you could actually cut it off the actual, um, out of the ground, just like so. And this will just keep producing, if that makes any sense. My hand is the soil. The lemongrass pokes out of the ground like that much. It usually does that. So if you clip it right there, it'll just keep producing. If you want it to, to go away forever, you just pluck it out of the ground. Uh, root and all, and all, all right? That we get rid of. Now, Ali, stay on that lemongrass if you don't mind. Now, I'm gonna cut the top off the lemongrass. So if you notice, this is the uppers, this is the lowers. We use the middle part, okay? This is what I call the UP in the kitchen, the usable portion. And I wanna feel for loose leaves. And the first layer is usually a little loose like that. I'm gonna get rid of that. So all this here is potpourri. Okay, it's, um, you can compost that. This is what I'm eating, all right? So for this purpose, we're going to make stock again, right? So I've got the galanga in there. That's what I want for lemongrass for soup. So that's gonna go right in. And you can stay on that shot, Ali. I'm gonna bring in, uh, I'm gonna bring in kefir lime leaf. Let's deep dive into kefir lime leaf. Looks like two leaves stuck together. Incredible essential oils. The limes don't look like this. They look very gnarly, like disease. Like they're so thick and like, they look like brain, um, kind of crisscrossy. So believe it or not, there's a ton of flavor in here. So what I'm gonna do for soup stock is just tear it up. I wanna expose as much surface area as possible. Where wow. did you get those lime leaves? I stole these from my, I mean, I borrowed them from my mom's garden. All right, so Thai chicken stock, chicken bones, and the Trinity. If I want to get a little crazier, I add a piece of garlic and I just pound it, skin and all on, just like that, right? And then and I throw the whole thing in, right into the stock, boom. And if you want a little heat, there's, there's choices of heat. Every, this is a jalapeno, it's not very hot. Uh, jalapeno, let's, if we go the hotter spectrum, Serrano, Thai chili, I wouldn't go crazier than that, y'all. Just take it easy. If you're a chili head, then you can do this kind of thing with a super hot or chili. And that's Thai chicken stock. Um, for the, my CCAP kids or my restaurant professionals, I'm gonna tell you a really dirty secret in the Thai restaurant business, all right? Not everybody takes the time to make chicken stock like that, right? And again, if you wanna get a tighter shot in there, Allie, not everyone takes the time to boil a carcass and actually put all the aromatics in there. Most people do this. They get, they get chicken bouillon, all right? Uh, Cause it's got a lot of salt and flavoring in it. And they do this and they go, maybe a, a wee bit of chicken, but mostly this. Now that's, that's a common practice in Asian restaurants. So if you wanna do a very quick and dirty chicken stock, use bouillon and all the aromatics. All right, so that's gonna boil away. What is Thai curry? What is it? Que es esto, all right? Um, <laughs> Let's go back to, let's do this pan down shot. Allie, let's do this pan down shot, if you don't mind, of just my tray. We have lemongrass, we have galanga, and we have lime leaves, right? We add garlic to that, All remember, and the chili. Remember all the things we used to uh, uh, make that stock? If I smash these all together in a, in a stone mortar or, or a, a food grinder, I would have a paste. This would give me close to green curry paste, right? If I remove the green chilies, took those out, added red chilies to this paste, I would make red curry paste. So Thai curry is basically a, um, Thai curry is just a paste 
made mostly of herbs, whereas Indian curry is a curry soup. Because all curry means, if you go back to the translation, is a sauce, a spiced sauce. And Indians mostly get to curry by dry spices. Follow Artie Sequera, follow my Indian chef friends for Indian curries. Thai curries are a totally different world. They're more mild. They have a lot of um, flavor range because versus spices. So I'll leave it there. Let's get into the pantry a little deeper. Let's make curry, peanut sauce, finish our soups. I'm not going crazy today. It's very, very simple, simple class. All right, hot, sour, salty, sweet. Salt, critical. Number one salt in Thai food, fish sauce. All this is is anchovies, salt, and water. You ferment the anchovies in salt. You add fresh water. The fermentation creates this beautiful kind of amber-colored liquid. That's fish sauce, all right? Asians were not the only ones to use anchovy liquid. The Romans did it. They still do it. It's called garum back in the day. Okay, you still can use it. Woo! Funky monkey, if you kind of eat it and try to smell it out of the bottle, but delicious and savory, and, and it really completes a dish in cooked food. All right? Phenomenal for pranking your friends. Not that I've ever done it before. <clears throat> sure, Dad, sure. Let's stay in the salt world. Because we are cousins or because there's a lot of Chinese influence in Thai food, I need to get you into soy sauces. Don't use Japanese soy sauce to cook Thai food. All right? Kikomans, all that delicious. Yamasa, not for this cuisine. You're going to use a Chinese soy sauce. So your base soy is thin soy or light soy from, from China. And then we have these modified soy sauces that we use in Southeast Asia. This is called Maggi sauce. It's basically a soy sauce, right? But it's got a more rounder, complete flavor. It's got the sugar in it. It's got the umami in it. It's not just salt like most Japanese soy sauces. If we add molasses to soy sauce, we have sweet soy. This is a Chinese sweet soy. It's like 60% molasses. It's very, very sweet. I'm gonna talk about how to make curry. Let's, let's live here for a minute. You already know, know about the paste. Let's talk about the, the second most important ingredient for curry, which is coconut milk. What is coconut milk? If you imagine, if you will, friends, a big coconut palm tree, you're in the tropics, you're on vacation, and you see those green coconuts, and some dude comes up there and pulls them down and husks them out, and they're white and they're sweet in the middle. Now that's a young coconut. If you let that coconut drop and it gets really brown and gnarly and it looks really dry and then you husk it out, that's that, that kind of dark brown fibrous coconut. That's the coconut you use to make coconut milk. The young coconuts are for the juice, old coconuts are for the milk because the sweetness now is not in the liquid, it's actually gone into the flesh. You scrape down the flesh only and then uh, you submerge it in hot water and you take a, a strainer and pressure, right? Like milking, like uh, soybeans, and that's how you make coconut milk. That's all it is. If you don't shake the can of coconut milk, repeat, if you don't shake the can of coconut milk, you have this gorgeous top layer of pure coconut oil. It's not pure because it's, uh, as water has, has pushed it out of there, that's why it's not oil, like you've seen the oil. And if I dig deeper, the water starts coming out, okay? For most cases, you should shake this thing up and use it, but not for curry. Let's get into curry. You can stay on that shot right there. I've got a pan now, and I'm getting that to heat. I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you how to make peanut sauce. But the way you make peanut sauce is you make a curry first, as I burn my board, right? We make a red curry, and then we add peanut butter and finish it as a sauce. I'm going to show you how to make curry first. The way to add curry, and remember what's in here. All those great herbs, all right? So we're getting all that flavor. So the way to make curry is you take the top of the, of the coconut milk, the unshaken top 13 to 19%, and we're gonna use it like frying oil. So that as that uh, heats up, it's gonna start to sizzle. Now, if you like a oily looking curry, I want you to just use coconut cream backed up with oil. If you like a cleaner, smooth, non-greasy looking curry, and the greasy looking curry is actually pretty traditional, authentic, that's a good thing. Some people don't like it. If you want that 
greasy authentic look, back it up with a little bit of fat. And I'm just using a high temperature oil, peanut, canola, grapeseed, whatever. So that's gonna start to get really hot. And um, I'm gonna let that heat up. Because this is mostly herbs and garlic and shrimp paste, you need to really express those flavors. And how do you express flavors, Team Teela and CCAP? What is the way using heat to express a flavor? What is it? It is caramelization. So the way I get that is, watch what happens with my curry paste and my fat now. Let's get tight on this if you don't mind. I'm gonna work the curry paste into fat because what do we know when fat heats up when fat heats up it fries things so on a very small level here the fat in the coconut and in the oil is frying that paste you have to remember this is basically uh, fiber water and you don't get down to the essential oils of these beautiful ingredients until you apply heat and torture them. So that's what caramelization is. So I'm caramelizing the curry paste to get a ton of flavor. That's fried down. It looks like uh, peanut butter. It looks like, I call it the OS point. You're like, how far do I take this? I go to the OS. OS means, oh, snap. It really means, oh, something else, but I can't say that because there's kids on here. All right, now to get this, now I can shake the can of coconut milk add a little more, and then start to reduce this. Bring that to a boil. Check this out. I've got basically a curry base. If I were to add chicken, boom. Veggie, veggies and season it, I made curry. Does that make sense? If I add chicken, vegetables, and seasoned it, I'm done. But because today, uh, and this is it, this is curry. You've just made curry, you just need to finish it, right? Now. For today's purposes, I'm gonna make peanut sauce. So check this out. Before I do that though, watch what I'm gonna do. Stay, stay tight with me here, Ali. Stay tight on these three bowls. I'm gonna separate out some chicken, right? This chicken here is going to be saute, all right? Saute is basically a skewer, a, a Thai kebab. I have turmeric, sugar, garlic powder, pepper, and salt. I have all these recipes up online, so don't, you don't need to follow along, right? Now, I could add a hit of flavor by adding this basic blank curry base, because remember all those flavors and herbs that are in there? I'm just boosting more flavor in there, okay? If I want, stay there, if I wanted to get more visque, like liquid, you go back to coconut milk. That's a saute marinade, friends. It's that simple, right? So, so that's, that's done. Saute marinade. I'm gonna mix all the dry, dry rub with a little bit of curry. And if you're like, I'm not making curry jet, but I wanna make saute, just pull it straight out of the can. Just do one of these jobs and get that flavor in there, all right? That also is a great marinade for Thai barbecue chicken. Chicken legs, chicken thighs, chicken wings, whole chicken, right? It don't matter. It's all there for you. So that's my saute, let's put that away. Peanut butter, I'm using cheap old Reese's peanut butter. You can uh, go on with your bad I know. Now, I'm all right, I'm gonna go peanut butter in as Ali is scrolling. And guys, I've just taught you how to make peanut sauce. I'm not done, because I need to teach you how to season a curry and a peanut sauce, because it's the same process. So watch what happens when the peanut fat melts into the bread curry. Now this is what you guys recognize as peanut sauce. Yo, it's that simple. Thai cooking is that simple. You know what I mean? If you understand the foundational ingredients and the building blocks, it is easy. Okay, I need to teach you how to season this. And for all you like hardcore foodies that are all about making curry paste, I ain't mad at you. But this company's been making curry paste for multiple generations. It's kind of like you saying, hey, I've never done it, but I'm making my own wine and beer. Do you, do you think the first time you do it, it's going to be stellar and delicious? It's the same thing. Yo, I make vinegar. Okay, good. I'm happy for you. But yo, 
I leave it to the experts. My family was not a curry making family. I leave it to them. Okay, I need to get on this and teach you how to, I need to teach you how to season this. If this was a curry, I would season it the same way. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory. I'm always thinking about that. Peanut butter sweet, curry paste is hot. What am I missing? I'm missing a little salt, a little bit of fish sauce, right? I'm missing a little bit of sweet. I've got a little natural sugar here. And then I'm missing acid, guys. I need an acid. I have three acid choices in the Thai kitchen. One would be rice vinegar. Two would be lime. Third would be tamarind. And tamarind is a fruit originated in Africa, but made its way around the globe in hot zones. It's, so it, this tamarind block is the fruit that is harvested. They've taken the shells away. They've taken the fibers away, but there still is some seed in there. And that's what that looks like. If you want to get a little close up in there. So you're like, how the heck do I cook with that jet? Well, I'm going to go put a little water in here and come back to you. Well, I put a tiny bit of water in here and I'll just put that on the ground. So you get a nice clean shot of that. And then, you do this. You can do it with your fingers. You can do it with a spoon. In Thai, we call this kayam. The motion is kayam, kayam. Smashing the fruit pulp into the liquid and getting the seeds out. And that's tamarind water, right? So I could do tamarind water. For curry, I like tamarind water. For peanut sauce, I like a little vinegar because it's a, it's a brighter, it's a brighter shine because this is more of a dip. I'm gonna thread my skewers and make saute. These are not saute skewers. Uh, these are what we call improvised saute skewers. This is actually the spike that you drive into a live eel's head to cut it on a board. So, but all, and this is actually my sewing needle for sewing meat. But we're just gonna, they're gonna be saute skewers today. So you see the saute, I've cut it into thin tiles and I'll post a video on teaching you how to cut protein. But I wanna just basically thread that through, thread that through, until I get three or four on there. It's totally up to you. You could do giant kebab skewers and make really long satays. That'd be really fun. Uh, and I'm only gonna do two for sake of time here. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna use my pike <laughs> to make the other one. Uh, again, <laughs> don't at me, guys. I know it's not a skewer, but it's improvised. Yo, I used a, um, a spatula handle to make um, uh, kebabs yesterday. Like it is, it's, it's, it's quarantine. You do what you got, do what you got to do to get it done. How okay. long do you marinate? Uh, well, you know what, because the chicken or the protein is sliced so thin, you don't need but a few minutes. If you want to marinate them and freeze them thusly, so they're ready to go, you totally can. Going to the grill. I've dabbed off a good amount. I'm going to hit this really quick with just some spray oil, which I love. And now I'm just gonna throw this on there. Skewers off. Here, come on over, Allie. If you need to, you need to come in, are you good? All right, excellent. Okay, so let's finish soup and then plate everything. Remember soup stock? I'm gonna go two ways with this. I'm gonna teach you how to make two soups. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, those of you that are restaurant tour, will be restaurant tours or current restaurant tours, all right? I'm basically prepping my mise en place on my station. Let's say I'm the soup station at uh, the Tila Thai restaurant. I'll never name a restaurant that, by the way. So I'll have all my mise en place ready to go on my station. So order fire, order comes in. Okay, one soup, two soups, tom yum soup, and uh, I have tom kakai, which is coconut chicken soup. So hopefully I've done my prep before I open. Otherwise, I'm scrambling like I really have in real life. Wait, you're making tom kakai? I'm making uh, tom kakai. Soup number one. First, I'm going to do now chicken, Thai chicken stocks, always holding. I taught you how to make that. You already know how to do that. You're golden. So ingredients. On the tom yum side, chili paste in soybean oil. Very critical ingredient. Okay? It's got massive amounts of umami, uh, delicious umami, savoriness. It's basically like roasted 
Um, garlic and chilies and shallots. Think about roasted onions, garlics, and shallots. So that's gonna go in tom yum bowl. Not, okay? I'm gonna hit this with kaffir lime leaf. I'm gonna hit this with scallion. Scallion's actually gonna be both sides. Kaffir lime leaves on both sides. I'm also gonna treat the bowls with, with my cilantro. And this is what I'm looking for, guys, when I'm flipping sautés. All right, I decided I need sanitizer towels. Woo! I bit off a lot today. Okay, sauté. I know it's time to turn when I see the chicken, instead of being pink, it goes opaque on the edges, and then I lift. Okay, it's ready to release. You're doing a great job, Ali. Yeah. Turn. Boom, just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna let that cook not too long. Tom, tom kakai. Chicken is going into the pot. I want that to cook through. While I get my coconut milk. Tom kakai, guys. Translation is galanga chicken soup. All right, galanga chicken soup. So I want to give the bowl a marker. A marker means it tells the person about what's in the dish. So I'm going to take this one and throw it into here. Galanga chicken soup, tom yum soup on this side. A little coconut milk there. All right. On this side, I'm doing tom yum shrimp. Shrimp. Uh, the chili paste soybean oil, aromatic garnishes, all right? And you season them both the same way, believe it or not, watch. Fish sauce, fish sauce. And again, you can build in the bowl, I mean in the pot, obviously, friends, but I've made these soups a thousand times in my day, so I know about how much seasoning I need in it, all right? And then I'm gonna put lime juice in both. And if customer orders extra spicy, who, who wants extra spicy? Raise your hand. Who wants extra spicy? Okay, I see a few of you raising your hands out there. I'm totally making this up. Anyway, and then I want extra spicy. New ingredient time. Also a little restaurant cheat I'm gonna show you. Chili powder, guys. Thai chili flake in, in. Now, if you're like, can't use MSG, but I'm gonna boost this flavor profile here. A, a, a tiny bit of chicken powder in each, in each one to boost the flavor. And I'm waiting for this to come to a full roll and it's just about there, guys. Check out this beautiful Thai chicken stock we made. So here we go, I'm ready. I'm waiting for that to roll. We're about done. Let's rest these saute in the plate. Let's rest the saute. Let's get a little peanut sauce in there. Can get a close-up of the peanut sauce? Yeah, of course, guys. Here we go. Mine's a little broken hippie style, like old school style that my mom and dad would make. A little bit, because remember, a marker is what's in it. I've got herbs in there. So I ain't mad at using Thai kefir limes as all garnish. All right, let's finish this. Look, I have a full rolling boil on my soup. I'm going to finish both soups. I should do that closer to you, shouldn't I, Allie? I should do that there and there. Bottom of your screen is tom, tom yum, lime juice, chili paste, chili seasonings, and look, that shrimp cooks instantly. All right, I'm gonna, before I stir that up, I'm just going to leave that there. Top is going to be tom ka, so Thai chicken stock goes into coconut milk, chili, lime juice, and then because this was chicken stock, I'm just gonna finish the chicken in there in here, right? So you're crossing the streams. Although that was that soup was shrimp, it was made with chicken stock. And now I can start getting these aromatics that were in both into the bowl because I think they look cool. I think they look delicious and they're gonna bring a lot of flavor. So check that out right there. That chili paste in soy milk is the soul of tom yum, right? Like that, right there. Coconut milk and galanga is the soul of the coconut chicken soup, tom kakai. Oh man, we're gonna eat good today. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm super happy. Saute, curry, peanut sauce, tom yum, tom kakai, staples, history, geography. So I hope you enjoyed the class. 
Today we've made tom yum tom ka gai. We made peanut sauce, we made satay, and also showed you how to make curry. Uh, on behalf of the Tilas, uh, we love you guys. Be safe out there. If you need anything, post comments and questions below. And one random act of kindness will make the world a better place. See you later. Bye-bye.